And we're joined now both on the air and on Super Talk TV by the Attorney General of the great state of Mississippi, Lynn Fitch. She joins us. Uh, Attorney General, how are you doing today? Hey, good morning, Dave. Doing well. How about yourself? Not bad. I expected you to be kind of up a little bit this morning, considering what happened. Talk about it. Talk about uh, Friday when the ruling came down, I believe it was about 10 after 9 on Friday, which we kind of knew this was coming because of the leak, but that's not quite the same thing as the opinion actually being issued, is it? Tell us about your day Friday. Right. What an exciting day. I mean, it's a, it's a brand new day for America. We have now turned the page on Roe v. Wade. So there are exciting times ahead. I mean, what a victory for the women, the children, and, and a victory for our court, our court that stood, stood so strong and upheld the constitutional principles. Uh, it was just an amazing day. Uh, it truly spoke to the empowerment of women and protecting life. And we were so excited to receive that. Certainly the uh, leaked opinion had us all delighted that it might come down along those lines. And then in fact, it did. So an incredible and historic moment, and uh, what an opportunity for all of us in Mississippi to lead on this cause um, to protect the inherent dignity of life. And, you know, one thing, one word that you mentioned in the middle of all that I want to pull out for just a second, and that's the word historic. I, I know everybody, I think, probably top of mind, surface level, realizes this, but I don't think we've really thought about this. A hundred years from now, 200 years, 300 years from now, Mississippi is going to be in the history books because of that decision that was handed down on Friday, right? Absolutely. Very historic. You know, for 50 years, Roe has been the ruling precedent case. And now the case becomes the Mississippi Dobbs case. That will be the case that returned this uh, very important issue on abortion policymaking back to the states as a rule of law question to be returned to the states. It gave the opportunity for uh, certainly all Mississippians, but for each respective state to have their own voices, to make a determination on what those policies would be in their states. Uh, certainly every state will look differently, um, but what a, a great time for Mississippi to be the champion for allowing this very important voice to be returned to the actual people's voice. And, you know, as usual, you you lead right into another good point. If you would talk for just a moment about the mischaracterization that has happened all weekend and will happen in the future, the Supreme Court did not outlaw abortion. That's not what the ruling was on Friday. If you would talk a little bit about exactly what the ruling was, you talked, you mentioned it just then, but if you could go into detail and let's make sure we underscore exactly what happened Friday versus what we're being told happened on Friday. Well, you're exactly correct, David. No question. Uh, this does not outlaw abortion um, in every state by any means. It ab absolutely means it returns to the states the opportunity to make those decisions based on, again, the opinions, the voices of people in each state. Uh, certainly, if you uh, do not like your representatives that have made those choices for you, then um, each uh, constituent has the opportunity to vote, the, to vote those individuals out of office. So you actually have the voice being returned uh, to the individuals in each respective state. Again, monumental day. Um, certainly it was a, a 6-3 opinion uh, to uphold the Mississippi law and then a 5-4 to uh, con overturn Roe v. Wade and Casey. Uh, that is significant uh, to have these justices come in and do that. And they were very crystal clear. This was an overturn of Roe v. Wade. Well, exactly. And the difference in those two, and I I loved, I hate to say this, but I loved watching the confusion when one outlet would report it was six to three, the other one that would report it was five to four. They didn't understand that Chief Justice Roberts ruled, uh, he voted and ruled in favor of uh, the Mississippi case, the Dobbs case, but did not concur that Roe versus Wade should be completely overturned. That's why you're getting two different numbers being reported on the total on the vote, uh, because there were two different totals. And, and uh, that's another thing that people don't understand sometimes, is that uh, it, it's not just making a pronouncement from on high. Sometimes there are nuances to Supreme Court decisions. 
Absolutely. And, and they were very clear in what they spoke to, how they upheld the issue as far as overturning Roe v. Wade. But again, they were very clear that it is a rule of law question and returns to the states. Um, there, were, you know, there was some other confusion, too. I, I think certainly the other side wanted to continue uh, to incite rage and fear. Uh, and they looked for a number of other issues to bring up as well, which were absolutely not in the opinion. You saw the other side numerous times discuss that this opinion spoke to contraception and banning of contraception. And it also spoke to same-sex relationships and marriages. And in fact, it did not at all. And it very clearly says this case, this opinion only addresses abortion. And it does not speak to those issues. And so that's a clarification point as well for people to understand. Well, exactly. Now, it, that, that doesn't mean that it couldn't come back up because this, most people think that this is because of the media coverage. This is a precedent on abortion. No, this is a precedent on states' rights. So that could come up again. This case could be used as a precedent in things that, that have nothing to do with abortion moving forward when it comes to the issue of who decides either the federal government or the states, right? Absolutely. You've seen over decades that the United States Supreme Court has ruled on precedents and overruled precedents, uh, this being one, because again, think about this, this has been there for 50 years and you had um, a set of unelected justices making these laws and they were very fuzzy. It was very hard to make a decision on viability lines and so forth. So it was very um, hard to determine what were the actual rules. This opinion very clearly states, this returns to the states, and the states make those decisions. They make their own laws, and they rule and regulate based on their particular laws in their state. And I think that we have to be very mindful of that. This is truly an opportunity that the court saw that certainly met, that there was not a constitutional right to abortion conferred, and so it definitely needed to be returned to the states. And that was the ruling as it came down. That was that was the six three part of the ruling, basically. Uh, but it was the entire thing. Uh, one one thing. But you're right, wanna... Dave. Um, Justice Alito very clearly laid it out. You know, he went point by point in the in the opinion about how egregiously wrong um, the Roe case and Casey had been as far as a precedent. So it was very specific. And again, very clear on the way the court uh, laid out their decision. Let me ask you, Attorney General, have you had a chance to read the entire opinion? It's 200 and some odd pages. I've seen it printed out. The lieutenant governor actually had it with him when he was here just a minute ago. It's a doorstop. Have you had a chance to read through all of that? Absolutely. Again, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a history uh, document, uh, as you said. This changes the entire tapestry of our state, but our country. Uh, and this is will become how things are taught in the history books, you know, from here forward. And so, yes, it's exciting uh, to be able to read that. And, you know, again, we were very fortunate in that we were chosen to handle this case. Um, and we certainly wrote the brief and did the oral argument. And you can see so many of those themes that we had posted up, at the, certainly that the court considered and utilized as well as they wrote uh, their decision. Now, I, I do want to get back after the break uh, onto the Roe versus Wade decision that came out Friday. But, you know, the, it's another opinion issuance day. That's one thing that people have forgotten. They're not done yet. And we have some more cases coming up that could be impactful across the board. I think in, in about uh, 15 minutes or so, they're going to start issuing opinions again today. We still have the prayer in schools case that they're, uh, they have on their docket for this term. Uh, we still have the immigration case. Uh, do, do you see any major surprises coming, just, just in your opinion? No, they've been pretty um, strong and held very close to the principle. So I think it'll probably be another good day today as those cases are released. Attorney General Lynn Fitch with us on The Gallo Show, and we will continue talking to her right after this. 
Welcome back to the Gallo Show, live in the Trustmark Bank Studios on Super Talk Mississippi. Dave Hughes sitting in for Paul today and joining us on the show, the Attorney General Lynn Fitch. Now, unlike some states, Attorney General, where the trigger law just immediately went into effect, it's a slightly different process in Mississippi, and that involves you, which leads me to my first question. Have you started that ball rolling yet? Absolutely. Um, we filed this morning this, for the certification with the Secretary of State. Um, certainly very uh, strong analysis that made, needed to be determined. So we made that certification and filed this morning. Um, it goes into effect in 10 days, which will be July the 7th. Uh, secondly, we sent a letter to the Jackson um, Women's Health Organization, putting them on notice that the certification has been filed and reminding them of all the duties and responsibilities they have under the law. So yes, that has been placed uh, and, and taken care of this morning. Now, from what I understand, the folks over at the Jackson Women's Health Center have said that they're just going to close. Is, is that correct from what you've heard? You know, there have been a number of reports, and I'm not quite sure exactly which uh, avenue that they're moving forward with, Dave, but we certainly have taken all the correct um, legal steps to ensure them to put them on notice that they, they understand what the law will be here in the state of Mississippi. Um, and, you know, as we talk about that, too, um, as this decision came down, um, talking about our responsibilities, you know, we, we said we are ready for the job to empower women and to promote life. And there are some serious issues that we're going to take on, and I think it's certainly our responsibility to, to look at and to take action. You know, we have to provide safety nets for women in need uh, based upon uh, the action being returned to the states. We've got to have a very strong conversation about affordable uh, and quality child care um, for women. We need to have the conversation about streamlining adoption processes and really strengthening the process for foster care because these children need to be connected very quickly with loving parents who can help them thrive. Uh, we've got to have some more conversation about workplace flexibility for women, um, including um, maternity and paternity leave. So we've got a number of uh, things that we need to be having this strong conversation in our state uh, that we will be pursuing as well. Because again, it's about empowering women and promoting life. There's, you didn't have to make a choice, but we certainly have some responsibilities. We ask for this job and we're certainly ready in the state of Mississippi to take it on. Well, and the, the question is, uh, the, the trigger law uh, that's going into effect that you certified this morning, uh, I believe was passed in 2007. Is that right? Um, yes, uh, or 2008. Yes, it was passed many years before the 15-week abortion ban uh, law was passed. And so we have now taken all the steps to do that. Mississippi is one of 13 states uh, with the trigger law already in place. Uh, and it all each state has different requirements, different certifications. Um, and we have now certainly taken action on ours. Well, my, my question is, that, that was 15 years for the payoff for the, the trigger law that is now going into effect. We don't have 15 years to wait to deal with these issues that you were talking about and the lieutenant governor was talking about earlier in the show last hour. How can we fast track some of this to make sure that we get some of these things taken care of so that these children moving forward in the next few years have the things that they need and the mothers have the things that they need? Is there any way to fast track this and make it go quicker than sometimes things usually go? You know, sometimes things take a while <laughs> before they actually happen. Can we make it go a little faster? Can we step it up? You know, that's a great question. And I, I think we absolutely can. I think you're going to see a united front across our state. Everyone is going to be willing to jump in 
help provide resources and tools to these pregnancy crisis centers. I think you'll see rules and regulations changed in some of our agencies. Uh, you'll see maybe some action certainly taken by the legislature. You'll see new policies and procedures put in place. Again, we know these are some challenges, but we also know how to drive towards solutions. And I think everyone is ready and up for the job of doing that because, again, we need to take care of these babies, these children, and we also need to take care of the mothers. Um, so I, I think you'll see a lot of that happen very quickly. I know from our perspective, we'll be working with partners across the state uh, to make that happen. You'll see the agencies, we all working together to outline the, the responsibilities and new plans of action to accommodate these issues. So uh, yes, I, I think we'll definitely see that across our state. Unfortunately, one of the things that that we have to talk about for just a moment uh, is the, the, the current state of the culture in America. Culturally, we are a mess, a hot mess right now in America, which leads me to this question. This is a historic case. You are at the forefront of it. Uh, have you gotten any... Uh, shall we say, pointedly negative commentary or attacks since the ruling was handed down on Friday? Have you heard from any of those opponents that just don't like what, what has happened here? Oh, certainly there's a lot of noise out there, um, but that certainly comes with the territory. Um, and, and it has been the case all along once we took uh, the Dobbs case and moved forward with it. You had a, you know, uh, very unhappy pro-choice side who did not want to see us succeed. And as we continued along the journey, um, it, we uh, were very comfortable, very excited uh, that we would get to the point where we could make the argument to the Supreme Court and felt very good about it. And as every day went by and we saw more and more of uh, the pro-life movement involved and people excited, the other side really turned to fear-mongering and really incited rage uh, across uh, our country. Uh, that is horrific and should not be happening. You should never have uh, groups, administration, or others inciting that type of rage or violence or anything like that uh, along those lines. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, because, and Justice Clarence Thomas opened this can of worms. Do you have any plans to try to go after and ban contraception or same-sex same -sex marriage? Uh, you know, my, I took an oath to uphold the Constitution and the laws of the state of Mississippi. So I, I have no plans. That, that's a legislative action. Uh, if something were to come along those lines, then certainly that is my oath of office. And as far as I know, there are no plans in the Mississippi legislature at this point that have been filed to do any, um, to pass any bills along those lines. Well, and that has been the conversation, and that's been part of the fear mongering that has been going on. And then, in my opinion, unfortunately, Justice Thomas leaned into that with his concurring opinion. Uh, and, and added fuel to that fire. So that's going to be some of the questions that we're going to be dealing with moving forward from here. Uh, and I'm afraid it's probably not going to go away anytime soon in terms of the questions being asked. Well, I think you're exactly right. Um, but, you know, for us right now, as we look at the opinion as it is, we know that it was very crystal clear and what our charge is, uh, what we must do in our state, and that's what we're pursuing again it's a historic time for all of us. It's truly a brand new day for Americans, for Mississippians. And so we have some very um, exciting days ahead of us. And we've got some things that we certainly need to all be putting in place to really, truly empower women and promote life across our state. Now, you have filed the certification with the Secretary of State's office. You have notified the Jackson Women's Health Center, which is the only abortion provider in the state. Uh, is this the end of this long road for you officially in your official actions? Are you done with this now? Well, again, this is a very complex and very um, involved analysis, so not completely. Um, we have a few other cases that involve abortion and we will be following all the the rules and regulations set out by the court to have all those other cases dismissed okay so there's there's still some paperwork and some things to be done uh before you get to finally take a nap hopefully you get a nap at some point here you've been busy for a while 
I know, but it's been a great busy, you know, again, what an exciting time for all of us. Yeah, just very quickly before we go, is there anything else on the radar coming up that we should be looking for uh, from, from your office? Well, certainly never dull, but uh, we're very uh, involved right now to make sure all this is done properly, uh, accurately, and correctly. So we'll be doing that um, here in the next few days. But again, I just want to say, you know, thank you for all the prayers, the compassion, and the love that was provided to myself and my team. And uh, we continue to pray and be mindful of uh, the duties that we all have ahead of us. Attorney General Lynn Fitch, uh, now officially in the history books for more than one reason. You're our first female attorney general, so you're going to get like a whole chapter, I think, before it's over with. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Always enjoyed talking.